So as we have learned in our earlier section that this is zero degree, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360. Now, we learned it that there is a first quadrant angles, um, we computed first quadrant angles in our previous section. So this one was 30 degrees, this one was 45 degrees, and this one was 60 degrees. Now what we will do is we're gonna learn how to construct all these angles first. We're gonna turn them or change them into the radius measure, and then we're gonna find what's the value for it. So before I do that, let's refresh the memory what we did. So in our previous lecture, we created this little table, and we said that if we do not know any trig functions, we can compute it like this. So, the, so we will construct two trig functions, sine and cosine in the first quadrant for all these values. So we're gonna say my theta, first it's zero degrees, theta, zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. So what we will do is we're gonna construct a table for six trig functions. The first one is sine theta, second one is cosine theta, third one is tangent theta, fourth one is cotangent theta, fifth one is secant theta, and the sixth one is cosecant theta. So sine theta, what we learned is that easier way to remember is write first one, two, three, four, and a zero in the front, and then divide by four to each number. And once you divide it, you take the radical of those numbers. And those values, when you, when you simplify, those are the values for sine theta, for these associated angles, and that values will go right here. So zero over four is zero, and a square root is zero. Square root of one is one, square root of four is two, so one half. Square root of two is radical two, and square root of four is just two. So that's the value for sine of 45 degrees, that's two over two. Sine 30, one half. Sine zero is zero. Sine 60, radical three over two. And this one is just one, so square root of one is one. Now when you want to find cosine, what we just do is we're gonna just flip the numbers from right to left, start writing it. So we're gonna say cosine zero is one. 30 degrees is red three over two. 45 degree is red two over two. 60 degree is just one half, and cosine 90 degree is just zero. So as you notice, we just started writing backwards. Now tangent, we know that it's sine over cosine. So let's refresh the memory. What we said, tangent theta is nothing but sine theta over cosine theta. So you basically take the ratio of these two numbers so zero over one is zero. One over two, radical three over two. Let's take a look how it's gonna look like. One over two, radical three over two. This cancels each other out, it's one over radical three. But we have to rationalize it, so we multiply by red three on the top and the bottom. So the value is radical three over three. So this value will be red three over three. This is just, you cancel it, becomes one. This one, red three over two and a two, red three over two, one half, becomes just radical three. And one over zero is undefined. Now again, when you go for cotangent, it's a reciprocal of tangent, so it's opposite values. So you start writing backwards. So you go undefined, radical three, one, radical three over three, and a zero. Let's go for the next one, is secant. Secant, we're gonna do a little uh, side work here too. 
that secant theta is nothing but the reciprocal of cosine 1 over cosine theta. So what you do is, whatever the cosine value is, when you take the reciprocal of those values, you get the secant theta. So 1 over 1 is 1. Red 3 over 2, when you do the reciprocal, uh, it becomes 2 over radical 3. But remember, we need to rationalize it. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. So we ended up getting 2 radical 3 over 3. So the secant 30 degree is 2 radical 3 over 3. Radical 2 over 2, when we do 45 degrees, let's take a look at that one. So when you do the reciprocal of this, it becomes 2 over radical 2. We learned in the algebra that 2 is radical 2 times radical 2. So these two cancels out, so it's just radical 2. So secant 45 degree is just radical 2. Secant 60 degree is 1 half when you take the reciprocal, it's just 2 over 1. And here it's 0 over 1 when you take the reciprocal, it becomes undefined. Now, if you want to find cosecant, again, we're going to start writing backwards. So, we will say undefined. Undefined. 2 radical 2. 2 radical 3 over 3. And 1. So, this table is going to help us to find the values up here. So, the first one, we learned it that the first order pair, when we write it, let's say this was a unit circle. And if it's a unit circle, this value is 1 comma 0. This value is 0 comma 1. This value is negative 1 comma 0. And this value is 0 comma negative 1. So the first component is cosine theta. And the second component is sine theta, which is related to x comma y. So try to remember this concept. I have to erase it in a second. But the first component here in the ordered pair, the first order pair, the x component is cosine theta, the y component is sine theta. That's the associated value for that angle. So now, from my chart, if I start writing, as you notice, what is cosine 30 degrees? Red 3 over 2. What is sine theta? Is 1 half. So when we write these values up here, we're going to say that this value, the first one is radical 3 over 2. That's the x component, cosine 30 degrees. And sine 30 degrees is 1 half. Then you go next, cosine 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. And then sine 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2 also. Now cosine uh, 60 degrees, so cosine 60 degrees is 1 half. And sine 60 degree is radical 3 over 2. Right? And we already know that cosine 90 is 0 and cosine 90 is 1. So we're done with the one part of the unit circle. Now let's learn a trick how to create this without using calculator and super fast. So I'm going to erase this now and I'm going to show you how quickly you can put all the angles up here without calculator. So let's erase this and this is how you construct it. That you're just going to take 30 degrees and start multiplying by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's take a look here, 30 degrees. And what I will do is I'm going to multiply that by 1, so it's 30, then it's 60 by 2, multiply 30 by 3 is 90, and you keep going all the way up to 360. So 30 times 1, 30 times 2, 30 times 3, 30 times 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Can you see that we went all the way started from 0 and
and we started all the way up to 360. So if somebody says, oh, what if I want to multiply 30 times zero, it's still what? A zero. 30 times one is just 30 degrees. And 30 times two is just uh, 60, and that's how you keep going. So let me erase this part. We just want to keep this. Zero, we already know anything multiplied by zero is zero. So now, if this is 30, then we skip the 45 for a second. This is 60, this is 90. So the next number here should be 120. So this is 120. Then we're gonna skip the middle angle because we skipped the 45. So now the next number will be what? 150. Now the next number will be 180, which is right here. Then we go to this dot and that will be what? 210. We again skip the middle line and go to the next one is 240. Then we go to next dot, which is 270. Go to next dot, which is 300. We skip the middle one. And then we go to next one, which is 330. So now I'm gonna erase this sign, cosine, so you can see better. So we're gonna skip this dot, and this will be 330. And the last one, if you go, is 360. Now, what we will do is, we learned the radian measure also, if you remember. So we're just gonna do one radian measure, and all the radian measure will come into picture too. So here you go. In order to do radian measure, what we said was, if you have a degree measure, and if you wanna do radian measure, you multiply by 100, pi over 180. So the zero, zero cancels out. Three goes here six times, so it's pi over what? Six. So take a look at the radian measure, how easy it is. So the first one is pi over six. Now, you don't have to think so much. You start multiplying pi over six by two, three, four, five, six, up to 10. So when you multiply this pi over six by two, it means two times pi over six, which is pi over three, right? If you multiply pi over six by three, that's gonna give you the 90 degree, but associated radian measure will be what? Pi over two. And you start multiplying, this one will be four times pi over six, you simplify two pi over three, then five times pi over six, six times pi over six is pi, seven times pi over six is this, eight times pi over six, you can simplify again, so this gives you four pi over three, nine times pi over six, you can simplify, it's three pi over two, 10 times pi over six, let's erase this, 10 times pi over six, you can simplify by five, and this becomes three by two, so it's five pi over three. Uh, 11 times pi over six is just 11 pi over six, and 12 times pi over six, as you know, becomes two pi. So now, as you notice, we have associated radial measure. We didn't have to memorize it, just multiply by two, three, four, five, and then you construct it. So let's write the associated measure for radian measure. So 30 degree, the radian measure is pi over six. That's a radian measure. 45 degrees, uh, we're gonna wait. 60 degrees is pi over three, pi over three. 90 degrees is pi over two. 120, two pi over three. 150, five pi over six. 180, a pi. 210 is seven pi over six. 240, four pi over three. 270, three pi over two. 300, five pi over three. 330, 11 pi over six. And uh, 360 is two pi. So, so far we did this part, and now what we will do next is the 45, because we left this empty, so let's take care of that lines. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing for 45, and then we're gonna find the values for those angles using only this little part. So now let's start with 45 degrees. So we're gonna keep multiplying 45 by one, two, three, four, five. So 45 times one is 45, then it's 90, 
then 45 times 3 is 5, 12, and 13. So it's 135. 45 times 4 is 180. So that's 180. Then 45 times 5 is 225. 45 times 6 is 270. And last one, 45 times, uh, we said 8, so you went 6, uh, you went 7 now. 350. So this is what we have. 45 times 1, 45 times 2, 45 times 3, 45 times 4, 45 times 5, 45 times 6, 45 times 7, and 45 times 8 is 360 as you notice. So this is 360. So now these are the angles for 45. So let's label it quickly. If this is 45, that's 90, then the next one would be 135 degrees. Then next one would be here is 180. Then here is 225. And as you notice, it goes between 210 and 240. The next one would be 270. 300, this becomes 350, and then 360. Same thing, let's find the associated radian measure. And it's very easy too. So we're gonna take 45 degrees first, and we're gonna times it by 180 degrees, right? 45 goes directly four times into 180, check this one out, right? So 45 can be reduced four times, so this becomes pi over four. So radian measure for 45 degrees is pi over four. And now we don't have to use our brain. Let's start multiplying by two, by three, by four, five, six, seven, and eight, and we'll get all the radian measures. So multiply by two, you get pi over two. Multiply by three, pi over four. Multiply by four is five. Five pi over four. Six pi over four becomes three pi over two. Seven pi over four and eight pi over four becomes two pi. So let's label all the radian measures. So now, my radian measure is for 45, I'm gonna say pi over four, right here. Then 90 is pi over two already labeled. 135 is three pi over four. Uh, pi is 180 labeled already, 225, 225 degrees. And the radian measure is five pi over four. Uh, 270 is already measured, is three pi over two. 315 degrees in a radian measure is seven pi over four. 360 degrees is already two pi. So this was a radian measure. And now the last piece, and we're done with the entire unit circle uh, without calculator. Now, how do I find the associated values up here? What would be my cosine 120? What is my sine 120? Because we need that for our next chapter. What is cosine 135? Sine 135. What is cosine 115, 150 degrees? Sine 150 degrees. Or cosine pi pi over six, and a sine pi pi over six. This is what we do. Pretend that this is a unit circle and it makes four quarters, quarters one, two, three, and four. So what I will do is, I'm gonna take this fourth part, a quarter, and I'm gonna flip it over on my y-axis. That's what I'm doing. So this is called symmetry with respect to y-axis. So you're gonna take this and you're gonna copy paste up here. Now, take a look, when you flip it over those values, your y doesn't change. Only value changes is your x. So first we wanna learn this terminology Symmetry with respect to y-axis. Now I'm not gonna do whole definition, but just give you idea that what this means is, let's say if you have an order pair here, x and y, this order pair, and if you wanna give it a symmetry with respect to y-axis, what you get is you respect your y, that means your y is fixed, you respect it. That means you don't change it. The only thing you change is your x. So your x positive becomes what? 
negative. So when you flip this over, look at the beauty about this concept that 130 degrees, when you flip it over, as you notice, this dot matches exactly here. This matches exactly here. This matches exactly here. Can you guys see it? So when you flip this over, this value is going to come at 150 degrees. So you respect your Y and you change the coordinate for X. Let me change the color. So what you get here is minus one half. You, you respect the Y, you change the coordinate X, so, sorry. It should be minus radical three over two, comma, one half. So what that means is everybody, the value of cosine 150 degrees is minus radical three over two, and sine 150 degrees is one half. That's what it is. Because it's a symmetry with respect to y-axis. That means you keep your y fixed. This value will be fixed. Only you change the x value. So your x became negative x because you respect the y. That means you don't change it. That's what it is. Now let's go for here. 45 degree, if you see the connection here, you respect the y, what would be changed? The x. So that value will be minus radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2. So in short, cosine 3 pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2 and sine 3 pi over 4 is positive radical 2 over 2. Now go here, do the same thing. You're going to respect the y and you will change the x. So lastly, cosine 120 degrees is negative 1 half sine 120 degrees is positive. And let's make sure we remember, all students take calculus. If you remember, cosine has to be negative. Do you agree cosine is x over r? So all my x are negative here, is that correct? That's how we look at it. So let me erase this part now, and let's take a look at here, how we're gonna get up here. So now, when we flip these values over, like this part over, that's very beautiful too. It's a symmetry with respect to actually the origin, that if you wanna keep using this value and you wanna reflect up here, it's a symmetry with respect to origin. So if you notice it, this point directly goes up here. This value, right, they're associated. This value associated up here, and 60 degree is associated right up here. That's one way to look at it. The other way, you think that I want to take this value and I just want to flip it over this way, and I want to take symmetry with respect to x axis, you can do that way too. But let's learn this concept and now do the symmetry with respect to origin. So next one, it's called symmetry with respect to origin. What this means is when you, you respect the origin, origin means zero, zero. That means you have a right to change your x and y both. That means whatever the coordinates you have for x and y, you do not respect either one of them if we only have to respect origin. So it's negative x, negative y. So when you start flipping this over, as you notice, that 60 degrees is associated with 240 when you look it up. So this value is going to be exactly these two, but both are minus. So those values will be negative one over two, comma radical, negative radical three over two. This value will be exactly this, but both signs will be opposite. So we are gonna say cosine 225 degrees is negative red two over two, and sine 225 degrees is negative red two over two. Let's go for 210. We can say cosine seven pi over six is negative radical three over two, and sine seven pi over six or sine 210 degrees is one over two, still negative. So symmetry with respect to origin means as you notice, we're going directly from the origin. We did not flip it over x or y. That's called origin, just go through the origin. Now last part is the fourth quarter. Let's find all these values so our unit circle is ready. 
Now what I will do is if I want to keep this value using my first quadrant value, I'm going to flip this over here. And that is called symmetry with respect to x-axis. So let's do last part. Symmetry with respect to x-axis. Again, with respect to means you respect the x-axis. That means if you have an x comma y order pair, and if you want to respect the x, means you don't touch the x, you just switch the y value po negative to positive to negative. So from here, because I'm talking about positive, because all the values in quadrant one are positive. So this positive will be changing to negative, but you respect the x, you don't touch it. So now when you start flipping this over, you may have a confusion, hey miss, do I go from here to here or here to here, how does that work? So in that scenario, you just have to draw the line so you can see the connection. That this value will be associated here, this will be associated here, and 60 will be associated here, okay? That's how you look at it. So let me erase it, and we're gonna flip this, or we're gonna take the symmetry with respect to x-axis, so this will match exactly 300 degrees values. Only part difference is you have to change the coordinate for y, it will be negative. So now, sub cosine 300 degrees, x, you respect it, so it stays the way it is, but sine 300 degrees will be what? Negative radical three over two. Next one here, cosine stays the same because we are respecting the x, so cosine 315 degrees is radical two over two, and a sine 315 degrees, it will be negative because we are respecting the x, because it's with respect to x-axis. Last one, uh, cosine 330 degrees, it's still radical three over two, and sine 330 degrees, or 11 pi over six in a radian measure is negative one half. Now very quickly, we want to mention this, as you notice, we said it, all students take calculus. Do you agree that cosine in this quadrant has to be positive, quadrant four? Do you see your x component is a quadrant, uh, it's a cosine component, right, cosine theta, and all these values are positive, forgetting that there is a radius because we're talking about the unit circle, but the radius is one. So as you notice here, sine has to be positive, so all the signs are positive and a cosine is negative because it's a unit circle, radius is one. In quadrant three, everybody, if you remember, all students take calculus. If you remember, tangent, cotangent is positive, but sine and cosine both are negative. Can you see? Cosine is negative and your sine is negative. Both are negative. And the last one, cosine is only positive and secant is positive in quadrant four. So your sign has to be negative. All the signs, the y component is negative. So that's the entire unit circle reconstructed. Now if somebody says, oh, what's the value of 360 degrees or two pi? It's still the same, one comma zero. Uh, for cosine 90 degrees is zero, sine 90 degrees is one. Cosine 180 degrees negative one, and sine uh, 180 degrees is zero. Cosine 270 degrees is zero, and sine 270 degrees, or sine three pi over two, is negative one. And that's the construction for the entire unit circle without using calculator very quickly. When you get used to it, it becomes like, super hand, like second hand nature.